Yeah. Well, hey, if you think that call was disturbing, wait till we ask Gilbert Gottfried about his personal life. <laughs> <laughs> if you see that. Yeah. Have you uh, got some news? Oh, about Gilbert? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gilbert was at my New Year's Eve party. <laughs> the, the, the people haven't stopped talking about it. Right. <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds of stories. Made quite an impact. How are you, Gilbert? Ah, and you. By the way, Gilbert gives the performance of a lifetime as Dracula Gottfried <laughs> in Son of the Beach. I've seen the dailies. Yes. Dracula and uh, the rabbi. And, and the rabbi, Nachas Johnstein. It is unbelievable. In a dual role, Gilbert I, I'm telling you, if he doesn't get an Emmy for this. I'm telling you, this should be sent around for your Emmy consideration. It really should. You're brilliant. I've seen the dailies. You know, on those daytime soaps, whenever somebody does a dual role where they're a yes. crazy person and a murderer and the good person, they usually get the Emmy. Gilbert plays a Jewish, a Hasidic Jew, uh -huh. lifeguard from Israel, who comes to this country and is bitten by vampires <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> and... A vampire hooker. Yeah. Unbelievable. I don't want to give too much of the plot of Gilbert, do a little... It's, just, so, it's, it's so intricate. I really... I, I mean... Uh, you're giving it all away. If Russell Crowe was sitting here right now, I wouldn't ask him to do a scene from A Beautiful Mind, but but since it's you... Since I have no respect for you. Since I have no respect sure. for you, is there any way that he I could... figures can, he can beat you up. If you could recreate that scene where you turn to Kimberly the lifeguard... And you begin to use your hypnotic vampire power. This is kind of like a cheap award show. Usually they'll show a clip. I know. Here they go, can you just act out the scene? <laughs> you, just do. I, I'll give you the music if you want. Oh, okay, that's where he does that. He turns. Kind of yes. Growling. Yeah. Lagosi. Yeah. I mean, it's brilliant. Yeah, okay. There it is. Kimberly. <laughs> Go ahead. Is yeah. he started yet? Yes. You say you want adventure. <laughs> I'll join me and the other children of the night. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And uh, it's romantic. Oh it's Gilbert as a leading man. Romantic? Yes. Are Gilbert you is absolutely yes. stunning as Dracula. <laughs> wow. Do they lacquer down his hair? Yeah. <laughs> and they give him special lighting. And stand him on a box? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the funny part. He's not on a box. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone towers over him. He's the, most, he's the least threatening Dracula you've ever seen. The shortest Dracula ever on film. Yeah. Uh... In fact, we're writing one now. Gilbert as 007. <laughs> It's a secret agent. And he's just 07. Yeah. Be 07. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've already talked to uh, some producers about expanding this into a film. Wow. That after this is going to be yeah. demand for this a series of films as Gilbert and Dracula Gottfried. <laughs> the Jewish vampire. Jewish vampire. <laughs> Meanwhile, like Martin Landau gets an Academy Award for doing a Lugosi imitation. Let me tell you something. Your Lugosi... It blows everyone away. Yeah. <laughs> this one is going to be unbelievable. You know, I've thought about that watching Martin Landau in that movie. I, I laughed to listen to Gilbert on this show. It's not even close to being as good. Uh, Gilbert, yeah. when you uh, really when first walk into that scene I'm talking about, yeah. and you talk about the children of the night, and you turn to uh, Tim Stack, who plays Notch yeah. Johnson, what do you say? Do it, please. <laughs> Please, give, if you, if you're, please. Can't they send you any clips? No. <laughs> Could you give us a little bit? Just give us a taste. <laughs> what? Children of the night. Oh, that was another thing I remember. It's like, usually when I get directed, they say, you know, stand here, do this. Do... But since this was a Dracula thing, an old horror thing, I was like saying, I was like arguing with them. I know. Yes. You know this character better. Yeah. Gilbert almost had, a de almost had to direct the entire episode. Yes. You know, it was Because they were saying, like, when you're speaking, we're going to put the light in your eyes. And I was going, no, no, the light in his eyes was when he wasn't speaking. And that was done as an insert. <laughs> right. And, and then, they, uh, oh, then the German guy is saying, we have to get some wolf band. And I said, no, that's Wolf Bane. Right, right, Say, yeah. You know? yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of disturbing stuff. Yes. You know, Gilbert became very difficult on the set when he got into the role of Dracula Godfrey. When Dracula Godfrey comes back after the commercial, I want to talk about my New Year's party. And, <laughs> and, Gilbert, and Gilbert something more scary. Something scarier. Whenever yeah. you have, like, try to have real... Let me just say this. <laughs> I'm talking to my agent yesterday, and we yeah. were talking about a bunch of different things. And I said, hey, by the way, did you check out the dailies on Gilbert? Uh -huh. He goes, no, I hadn't seen that yet. And I, I go, oh, you got to watch it. It's really, really funny. It's just it's a great laugh. And uh, I've watched it maybe a million times already. I have it on a continuous loop. <laughs> so, uh, 
So, so, uh. You're like Michael Jackson with Elizabeth Taylor movies. So my agent says, yeah, right, yeah. So my agent says, so my agent says to me, hey, by the way, have you ever tried to have a personal conversation with Gilbert? <laughs> So I said, you know, I said, no, not really. It's very. I said, but wait a second. I said, when Gilbert was in the hospital with his appendix, we kind of had some serious conversation, yeah. but it was really horrible. But that was yeah. when Gilbert was on drugs or medication. Yeah, or yeah. But it was like Gilbert was talking about he's going to die and, and you know, he was it, leaving show business. Yeah, that was when Gilbert was leaving show <laughs> business. He re when Gilbert turned to me and goes, you know, I realize my life has been empty and I have to find something more meaningful. I went, I got to get out of this room. Yeah, what I'm going to help do? out the lippers. You see, yeah, I should have been like, it, real, it was a serious conversation. I'm not kidding. Yeah. And even Richard Belzer said, why are you talking to Gilbert? He goes, I visit Gilbert in the hospital. I bring a newspaper. Oh, I yeah. sit in the corner and I read. Be Belzer, yeah, he would come <laughs> in, he'd have a paper with him, and he'd like sit in the corner looking at the paper, yeah. never say a word to me. And it's then comforting you. Look at his there. watch, figure, oh, well, that's an hour. It's like, he's like a lamp. Yeah. He's, like, he's like, I'm going to leave show business. This is it. I'm going to, I'm going to help the lepers. And then fast forward 10 seconds, the agent calls and says, you can make 250 bucks you do the voice of a toaster. Yeah. <laughs> Right yeah. Right 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 was, but so I said to my agent, those slippers yeah. can hold on a little longer. <laughs> I said to my agent, yeah, I tried to have a personal conversation, but it's just really uncomfortable. I would love to see that. You know what So, so what? He's so uncomfortable with conversation to begin with, Gilbert, and he makes you uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Right. So anyway, he just says Gilbert's no. He's not letting you in at all. Yeah. No, there's no repartee. Yeah. So uh, only if this is a big crisis. Yeah, he's yeah. not helping. Yeah. And like, and, and, like, and I walked in the room one time, and I got more of a glimpse of Gilbert's life than I wanted to because his mother and sister were sitting yeah. there. Oh, yeah, I saw that whole thing, too. Yeah, and he didn't even introduce you. You don't even know it's his mother and sister. I don't know if he's embarrassed. That's or right. You have to guess who these people are in the room. Yeah, and I go, excuse me, who are you people? And he goes, well, we're Gilbert's mother and sister. And I go, I go, a oh, pleasure to meet you. And Gilbert just lays there. He doesn't yeah. introduce and anyone. And then, like a record, Gilbert recounts every moment of his crisis oh, yeah. so in worst. the apartment. I was, oh, yes, I was lying there. And I, I didn't want to call an ambulance. I didn't want anyone in my apartment. So I took a bath, and I passed out in the bathtub a couple of times. But my appendix had already burst, and, and then I passed out on the floor. I was unconscious. So, anyway. Um, it was great. Which should be the next Son of the Beach episode. <laughs> right. <laughs> dramatic. So, wait a second. Wait a second. So, Gilbert did his first dramatic run. Yes. So I said to my agent, I said, movie of the week. I've never really had a personal conversation with him. I said, did you? And he goes, well, New Year's Eve. I said, you had a personal conversation? He goes, yeah, here's how it went. I walked over to Gilbert and got introduced to him for the 10,000th 10, 10, time. Right. I guess they've yeah, you know, they never met yes. before. I said, don't feel bad. Every time after the show, I go, hey, Gilbert, thanks. And he's like, oh, yeah. Have I'm, we met? Yeah, have we met? Yeah. It's new every time. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, so my, my agent goes, I went over to Gilbert. I said, Gilbert, um, can I get you a glass of, uh, can I get you something to drink? And Gilbert went, yeah, get me a glass of wine. <laughs> I'm being on my agent's like an older guy. You said, he is injured. Yeah, Gilbert, he's limping from a, a leg injury. And Gilbert has, for him. has no clue that you like, pick me you up say some no. sandwiches. Yeah. So my agent went online and got the drink. You know, it's funny, Gilbert. I was standing right there. With, I was actually talking to Gilbert when your agent walked over, and I saw that. And your agent looked at me like, what do I do? And then your agent got online, and the line was like long. Yeah, I know. And then he brought the drink back. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but what was great about it is Gilbert was with a girl, and I went over with the girl I was with, introduced her, and blah, blah, blah. And he's talking to us, never introduces the girl he's with. She's standing never. there, like, yeah. with never. her head down. Like, Gil like, you know, it's like a Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Gilbert, yeah, what is that? Like, do you ever introduce the girl? Like, you didn't introduce her to me either. Or like, me, I and she's following him I'm around. I'm a Mac Daddy. Like, yeah. And not only that, Gilbert is so inappropriate. Like, I'm having a New Year's party. I invite Gilbert five minutes before the party that day. Calls up my assistant. Um, I want to bring a bunch of people with me. <laughs> so, so, I, so, my, so, so my my assistant calls me and goes, "What should I do?" I said, "Tell Gilbert to go yeah, f himself." Yeah, well, yeah, I'm room for a bunch of people. A bunch of people. He doesn't even know about. Yeah, bunch I said, "Who are the bunch of people?" Yeah, with yeah, me. yeah, who are these people? <laughs> I'm like Eddie Murphy. There's 50 people. I walked in the bathroom later, and Gilbert was beating his girl with his sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, bitch. I told you not to make eye contact with anybody. Gilbert, then, you know, he shows up to your party, and it's a nice New Year's party. 
The outfit he had on was the worst outfit I've ever seen. He's dressed up today. I know. <laughs> yeah, he was, what he was wearing. Yeah, but maybe he thought it was rock and roll. Yeah. That, was, that was rock and roll, Gilbert. I, I get a bunch of crap for a leather blazer and a cross. <laughs> you, know, you know, I've been having the same conversation with Gilbert for probably 15 years now. He comes in and I go, Gilbert, how you doing? Mm. You know, yeah. has there, everything going okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What have you been up to? This and that. <laughs> and, was, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, there's no personal conversation. I, 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 I didn't even bother no. to try it. Wait a party. Minute, let me, I know let's it's be worth fair it. to uh, Gilbert. If he thinks if he <laughs> oh, says man. he's doing good, you're going to want to borrow money. Right. <laughs> Would you call him at home sometimes? Yeah. And it's funny because people call here and try to impersonate Gilbert, and they get on the phone and they go, Hey, it's Gilbert Gottfried. And I know that can never be Gilbert because off the air, you get, I go, Hey, Gilbert. You get Groucho your... Marx by yeah. before you die. <laughs> I go, Gilbert, what's up? Oh, who's this? It's Gary from Howard Stern Show. Hi. Uh, listen, Howard wants to know, can you come in on Friday? Friday. Uh, i got to think. Uh, can you call me back later? It's just not Gilbert. It's so odd. Yeah, it's weird talking to Gilbert off the air. But does well, the girl I... ever get upset that you don't introduce her to anybody? No, this is the way I cheat my bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the, girl, the girlfriend who I sort of know? If She's she, proud she of him. She doesn't mind it, and it's almost as if she knows this other guy that we'll never know. Right. Yeah, so right. she doesn't mind. She's and the lucky one. <laughs> she gets another real girl. Artie said his girlfriend was, you know, he brought a date, Artie. Yeah. Artie's girlfriend went over and was talking to Gilbert for like 45 minutes, and he had this terrible fear that Gilbert was going to pick up his girlfriend. Oh, I, had, yeah. I had this picture of Gilbert banging her in the bathroom. <laughs> what could be worse in a man's life than Gilbert steals your girlfriend? Yeah. Gilbert beats your time. Yeah, I'm trying to leap from the top of the building. Val, you're on the air. Okay, hello? Hey. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, you're on the air. Now, what do I say? Who is this? It's Howard. It's Howard. How are you doing, Howard? What do I say? Yeah, no, no, no. He stole my girlfriend. Who did? Gilbert Godfrey. Dude, then you got to be a mess. <laughs> that's uh, that's what I said. Is this is Val, Val Kilmer? <laughs> Val, how did Gilbert steal your girlfriend? Val. We were at a party. I don't know. Ask if he remembers this. It was a year ago in the West Village. It was a rooftop party. The girl's name was Laura. I don't want to say the last name. Wait. Was she blonde? No, she had black hair. Gilbert. Oh, she was really, ju she was really Jewish. I get laid, so yeah, he knew. So yeah, and, 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 and dude, Gilbert stole your girlfriend. Well, the, the funniest part was that Gilbert, Gilbert was like the oldest guy there. First of all, he was like 38 years old. Everyone else in their mid to uh, late 20s. Oh, well, that's the age Gilbert dates. And there's must have been 25 years ago. Yeah. yeah, and then and they're playing like some sort of music up top, and I asked to put on the Beatles, so they put on the Beatles, and then Gilbert starts talking about the Beatles. And the girl that I'm, then she was at the time. Gilbert is an expert on the Beatles. Well, apparently he was at the time. I used to work with George Martin. <laughs> <laughs> he was his producer yes. in his first album. Yeah. So she starts talking to him about the Beatles because she's, you know, in awe that it's Gilbert Godfrey, like a, you know, the only kind of celebrity at the party. So he was like a big deal at the time. And then she That's only because no other celebrities. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And the, the Tracy three of us. Gold wasn't there. <laughs> Tracy. Come on, Gilbert's big in any room. Anyway. Yeah, go ahead, yes. <laughs> yeah, so the three of us are talking. And then Gilbert, you know, starts talking about the Beatles. She's like, oh, you know, I have a lot more Beatles albums downstairs in my room. Do you want to see them? Wow. And, she oh. said, and he says, well, yes, I do. <laughs> and then they go downstairs. Mark. And I'm just sitting there like, what the hell is this? <laughs> and he banged her? I don't know. I didn't. Uh, she said no, but he supposedly asked her out to dinner. I think she went out to dinner with him. I'm not sure. Did she pay when she went out to dinner? Yeah, of course. <laughs> the chick was like, "I'm really into guys who do a good Alan Thick impression." Yes. <laughs> hey, Gilbert Gottfried's in the sheet. Charles, you're on the air. <laughs> yeah, how, how you doing? Hey. Yeah, this is Charlie D, the lawyer that represents Al Goldstein in Brooklyn right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. You remember me? I, right? I know. I, I yes, and I read this article. Yeah. Hey, did you guys hear about this? Al Goldstein, who is the publisher of Screw Magazine, uh -huh. is so out of his frickin' mind <laughs> that uh, he's he's in court now for harassing some woman who worked for him. Go deeper than that, Howard. All right, well, I'm just doing the, the quick version. But when you work for Screw Magazine, don't you have to expect a certain degree of That's harassment right. in the workplace? The stigma attached to Yeah, uh, gee, I work for Screw and I'm being harassed by Al Goldstein. What yeah, did what he a, say? He I, just I, I can't believe magazine. the language he no, used. The level, yeah. the level of harassment is that he's been giving her phone number and address out on television. Wait yeah. a second. She said, she, she said she typed this stuff up, but she never read it. I right. work for Screw, yes. So anyway, so, so make a yes. long story short, Al's been going to court and, and actually harassing the judge and going berserk in the courtroom. Right, right, I heard about it. They that. had to handcuff him. They put him in jail. Yeah. 
they could they couldn't take it. He was making everyone crazy, which doesn't help your case. You're acting <laughs> mental. Right. So they so couldn't afford to feed him, Howard. He's too fat. Then he, they're treated like it's a big joke, but meanwhile it could be a big pain in the ass. And then Gilbert, uh, then uh, uh, Al Goldstein calls as a witness to show what a great guy he is, like a character witness. Grandpa Munster. <laughs> oh, really? Grandpa Al Another Lewis. Another out of control guy. So he gets up on the scene and goes, Al's a great guy. And you know why? Because Munster is one of those guys that goes to Al's, you know, he has a breakfast every right. Sunday. This is against freedom of the press. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, 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 this is our, our first. Uh, yeah. So Gilbert never wanted to turn down a free meal. Yeah. Goes to Al Goldstein's all the time. He's one of those yeah. guys who shows up with Al Lewis is and stuff. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And, and sit between Al Lewis and like a dominatrix. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But right Gilbert, court. So Gilbert's <laughs> one of those guys that goes to Al Goldstein's brunches every Sunday. And now Al Goldstein and his lawyer want Gilbert to testify. As a character witness? Like, like, oh, Michael, oh, as Bella Lugosi. Why don't you go as Bella Lugosi? Yeah, I, I must tell you, this Al Goldstein is a very and they tasty have the music yeah. Play. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I would believe me. You know what? He is not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> he is not. Ignore the fact that he works for Screw Magazine <laughs> and that he advertises butt plugs. <laughs> he is an innocent man. <laughs> he would never sexually harass a girl. <laughs> Just because he works for Screw and advertises she mails <laughs> will come to your house and have anal sex with you for a dollar. <laughs> he is an innocent, wholesome individual. <laughs> uh, judge, look into my eyes. <laughs> look at me, judge. I am here to free Al Goldstein. <laughs> you will let that fat you go. He is a big fat tyke, and you will not put him in jail. Release that big fat tyke. That big fat hook nose tyke. Release that 500 pound heed. Do not put him in the prison with those spotters. <laughs> He cannot be. He cannot survive with those shots. <laughs> he is a 2,000 pound tyke with a big hook nose and bad skin. And his breath smells. And he gets little balls of saliva on the corners of his mouth when he speaks to you. And. He advertises girls from Korea with penises <laughs> who you can order for five cents to come to your house and have oral sex with you. But other than that, he is an innocent man, Your Honor, even though he is a 5,000-pound kite with a hooked nose and bad breath. So what do you want, Counselor, from uh, Gilbert? This is Gilbert's Howard, testimony. Yeah. Okay. You can have Gilbert's testimony on tape now. You can enter it in court. I don't even have to be there. Yeah, you just have to be there. Al Goldstein's a big hook nose kite because yes. he doesn't want to be with the Schwarzes. Be in jail. Play <laughs> thousand Gilbert. Yes, Your Honor, I'd like to play this tape. Gilbert, you would, this is the bottom line. You were too cheap to use the to take, to use subway fare to go to the courthouse. That's why you didn't show up. <laughs> So? Yeah. And yeah. Like, you know, they give free lunches to people who Charles, let me ask you a well, serious question. Tell me. Don't you think Al Goldstein should <laughs> mellow out in court? I mean, can't aren't the charges somewhat serious? Howard, he flipped out on a First Amendment question. I mean, you should have been there, Howard. Oh, come on. Yeah, but he can't Howard, say that he wants wait, terrorists to attack question. the judge. He thinks it's his First Amendment right to give out the DA's home phone number and home address. Why is he doing this? Why? Why do, The guy's got some dough. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> you seem to be a... a I mean, He's you, supposed to be a reasonable where did you, one. Where, did you, where, where did you get your law degree, counsel? It's wrong, it's wrong to do those things. But he has the right to. I don't agree with Al Goldstein. In fact, I think he's a disgusting pig. I tell him all the time. He's a big disgusting pig. I'm his lawyer. Pig. I'm his lawyer, but you know what? What kind of lawyer tells his client he's a big disgusting pig? pig. I think he's that a disgusting he's pig. pig. But he has he's a, right. a kosher pig. And but day, a disgusting kosher pig. <laughs> he's fat and disgusting. <laughs> and he smells bad. Charles, I'm sure you're a good lawyer, but where did you get your law degree from? An ad and screw? Yeah. <laughs> 
have that screw corresponding. <laughs> Howard, your law degree. Howard, degree. Yeah. the hung jury right now. They've been deadlocked for three days, Howard. I did a good job. Really? That's right. Because someone's in there and they know that it's not about what he said. It's his right to say it. What did you want Gilbert to do, I, actually? I know you, <laughs> really, how would he help you? What Gilbert, Gilbert could have come say? in and said, listen, I know Al Goldstein's a character. That's why I'm here as a character witness. But he's not a violent man. He's a big, fat slob with a big mouth, but he'd never heard a fly. And Gilbert, I don't know where you disappeared, but Al Goldstein said he's going to superimpose your face on a naked body having sex with Bin Laden. <laughs> Gilbert wishes that would happen. Yeah. It would happen. Right. Listen, I got to go to court. All right, take care, Charles, and uh, we'll wish your client good luck. Thank you. I guess Gilbert right. is getting the big F U on Al Show. The big F U, you're getting it, Gilbert. You're getting it, boy. By the way, I want to hire you to be my lawyer so you can yell at me and call me a big fat kite. So with a big nose. With a big nose. All right, thank you. I love you, Howard. I love you. Bye. There you go. That's Charles. Who is Al Goldstein's lawyer? You and describes. <laughs> I love I, Gilbert's skinny I, I would give anything for Gilbert to go and dress as Dracula and testify at the Al Goldstein trial. <laughs> I would give anything to yeah, hear but that. You have to pay him. We gotta, we're going to be right back. Adam Carolla is here, the host of the Man Show Sunday nights at 10 o'clock on Comedy Central. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried's here performing at Caroline's on Broadway tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. you got to go see him. He's fun. Will you do any Dracula Gottfried? I'll try. Yeah, he, that means he won't. He might yes. work that in. God forbid he should do that. Yes. We all like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's a uh, call for reservation, 212-757-4100. And next week... Gilbert will be at the Stress yes. Factory oh. in New Brunswick, New Jersey on March 7th. Is he 7th. still doing Hollywood Squares? Uh, I think so. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 When I have time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After his appendix attack, he quit that. Yeah. yeah. I like that he was quitting show business because, you know... That career, you know, all of show business yeah. was horrified yes, because I, I, one of the squares in Hollywood Squares wouldn't be filled. <laughs> I, 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 I did give up show business. I'm doing Hollywood Squares. <laughs> yeah. So, he's also, Charles Nelson uh, guy from yeah. Godfrey. He's also doing a PSA as the voice of a carbon monoxide tester. <laughs> all right, we'll be back right after this. The Howard, Howard. Yeah, well, Michael, Michael Nesmith's mother invented whiteout. He didn't have to be in the monkeys. He was like, I'm not doing monkeys touring because my mom inv invented whiteout, left me a mil like a billion dollars. Good for him. I do the same thing. That's why I'm glad Julia Louis Dreyfus's show tanked because yeah. her. Her dad is the Dreyfus Fund. That's unbelievable. Like, she, what, she needs more money? Yeah, she's got really? Dreyfus money. Who else is like that? There was somebody else. The girl... You're rich. You don't need this job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not hiring you. Why You've got like too Gil much money already. Like Gilbert st snarring watching Ellie. Yeah. What? I think we're talking about people that got ripped off, too. Like that girl that's coming on this week, Monet Mazer from 40 Days and 40 Nights. Her father drew the Rolling Stone lips... And tongue, yeah. And he got five hundred bucks for it. See, there's always a sad sack story that. Oh, also, Alan Sherman, who wrote "Hello Father, Hello um, Mother," Hello, yeah. He, I think, invented either uh, like "What's My Line" or "To Tell a Secret." Yeah. And and he sold it for like three hundred dollars. <laughs> you know what? That show wasn't that great. He got yeah. overpaid. Yeah. <laughs> He shouldn't complain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, screw him. Yeah. He invented. But the, the people, I, I've got a secret. You have to guess it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Here's $3 million. Bastard. <laughs> fat, you fat bastard. That's no gong show. You fat bastard. bastard. Yeah. You retard. Who's the retard who invented what's my mind? <laughs> so, uh... What, who was the other person we were talking about? That the Nike, the guy who the uh, Nike, not the swoosh, Nike who swoosh, not the lips and tongue. Juliana Markley. Oh, Juliana, Juliana Mar yeah. What about her? Her father wrote the theme song. Plop plop plop. plop fish fish. Fish. Did he get me oh. money? Did he get money? Yeah, that I think he made money for. But I know what we were talking about. We were talking about Kevin Bacon. It would about be about terrible Bacon if brother. he got screwed on that. Oh yeah. <laughs> we were talking about how he wrote plop plop fish fish and, and only got a thousand for it. Where is the justice? <laughs> well, that's like uh. Where is God when he? <laughs> Kevin Bacon's brother. If, the reason that it's funny that the Bacon the Bacon brothers do every interview, as Adam points out and says, you know, oh, music was our first love and acting is just like a you know secondary thing. In fact. My brother wrote the theme song for Poland Springs. Poland Springs, you know, yeah. Poland Springs, what it means to be from Maine. 
Yeah. So, you know, that's how come he's a legit, that's his claim to fame. Yeah. Yeah. He's a legitimate musician. He wasn't just some guy who's hanging on Kevin's coattails. He wrote that song. Exactly. <laughs> do you have that? Do you have that tape of um, Russell Crowe's band? Yeah. We should go up. We should have Bacon Brothers go up against Russell Crowe's band. Do we, do we have like, Bacon Brothers? Music was my first love, but I can't do it. Yeah. 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 You admit it. Yeah. You know, music is my first love. I love to listen I, yeah. to yes. it. Yes. I actually wrote Obey Your Thirst, Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> Got like $200. Just for like. It. I, was, I was talking to. This cause he goes, Sylvia Miles is there and, uh, and Richard Bay. Right. <laughs> That's when I when know. When I realized I'm a superstar. Yeah. Are they yeah. still circulating those two? That's a weird thing. Like you get invited to a, um, like a, a party, a celebrity in, bash, an industry party, and you go, hey, it'll be cool because there'll be a lot of famous people there. Go, and you get there and you realize you're the only one who thought that. Right. I, I went to this Disney World party, a hundred years of Disney World. Yeah. I was the only one who belonged to Screen Actors Guild. Really? Wow. Yeah. Did they so make you? Did they make you get in a parrot outfit? Oh yeah. <laughs> How do celebrities know which ones are good and which I ones are bad? No. Don't you have someone have like a publicist who tells you? You're I good? always show up at these ones and I go, oh my God, this See, is like you know how come Gilbert, Gilbert just goes to everything? No, Gilbert no. doesn't have a publicist or an assistant who calls and says, I want to know who's on yeah. that list and don't BS me. I need to know who's really on that list. Right. Who's, go who's actually going? Yeah. You well, Gilbert sometimes will call in a disguised voice. <laughs> Hello. His own assistant. This is Who Gilbert is Gottfried. at the party? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. I'm Gilbert Godfrey's personal assistant. <laughs> Mr. Godfrey must know. I like when I say, who's going to be there? And they go, well, we've invited Jack right. Nicholson and Julia <laughs> Roberts. Now, Gilbert does like that. Yeah. Hello, this is Magic Johnson. <laughs> hey, uh, hello there. Is any white women going to be a hair <laughs> party? Doesn't sound like magic. No, this be him. <laughs> <laughs> We've invited Orson Welles, JFK, JFK Jr., and John Wayne. And so. Douglas Fairbanks Sr. Yes, has sent right. You know what the move is. Clark Gable and Errol Flynn. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. At least one of them will show up. The move with the publicist is because I go through this all the time. You say, well, who's going to be there? And they say... Well, you know, uh, Howard Stern and, um, you know, Mickey Rooney, and they'll tell you all this. Look, it looks very good. It's almost 100%. Mm. But they never commit, so you can't yell at them that someone didn't show up. Right. They'll never tell you who's going to be there. Yeah, because right? nobody's ever there. It looks very good. Then you read in the paper about these events, and they don't seem to be any different than any other event, but every famous person goes. They all, like Sting was there, Russell Crowe was yeah, there. Yeah, why this one? Yeah, you don't know. Any other. Uh, Nancy, you're on the air. We're, we're here with Gilbert Gottfried performing at Caroline's on Broadway tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Reservation, 212-757-4100. Gilbert will also be at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick, New Jersey on March 7th. Yeah. Uh, hi, Nancy. Yes. You're on the air. Oh, Okay. Jesus. <laughs> all right. That's all she wanted, apparently. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, I've accomplished my wish in life. <laughs> Say something, retard. Uh, well, yes, I am on the air. <laughs> Nancy, you're on the air. Okay. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, let me figure it out. <laughs> Are you a Gilbert fan? No. <laughs> Do you know that you're on the air? Do you no. want to get beat by... <laughs> oh. Tell her one more time. Okay. See, she's not sure about it. First time she was sure. Yeah. Nancy? Yeah? You're on the air. Okay. <laughs> Gilbert, have your That's why I call. Let she, me guess. To get on the air? No. Your <laughs> publicist makes sure she's at the next party. Right? <laughs> no. You want to marry Gilbert Godfrey? No, I want... No, Are you no. on the air? Well, how would I know what you called about? Okay. Well, I thought they told you. No, nobody tells me anything. <laughs> they wanted you to tell They put up your oh. name, Nancy. Sorry. Okay. What I want to tell you is that I'm a relative of Sarah Youth. That's the girl who won the Olympics? Yes. The ugly broad? Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, oh, I don't think it's funny. But anyway, I just want to tell you that... What are you to... Seriously, what are you to her? An aunt. Oh. What are you, the mother's sister? No. What are you, the father's sister? The, the mother's brother. The mother's brother. You're the mother's brother? <laughs> With. Okay. You're, oh, you're married, married to. Yeah. Okay. You sure you're married? No. Maybe not, but anyway. Did she recognize you, or are you just doing a little gold digging? <laughs> no, I was out there. You're on the air. I know that. Nancy, go ahead. You're on the air. Anyway. Okay. All I want to say is I heard you talking about her yesterday. Yes. And she never had a nose job, and she's just one great kid. And that's yeah. all I want to say. Seems like a great kid. Don't you think, though, now every Yenta on Long Island 
No, and I don't want you to think I'm one of those either. I didn't say you were. I'm saying, don't you think every Jewish family in Great Neck now is rushing their kids to get skating, skating. lessons? Yeah. They were doing that before. You know what's funny? They now they're gonna now they're gonna have entire it's synagogues. Jews on ice. Yeah. <laughs> Jews capades. <laughs> Jews anyway, I didn't really. I didn't call to be made fun of. Who's making fun of you? Okay. We're gonna do that later. <laughs> we'll do that after you hang up. I just want to tell you that I, th I I'm a great fan of yours. Thank you. I haven't been listening for too many years. Is the Olympic chick a fan of mine? Who cares about you? Really? Save this for when you're on the Some air. Some of her family, but whatever. All right, hold on. You know what? You've got a good story. Let me put you on the air. <laughs> You really? I'm not on the air? Not yet. I'm going to put you on now. This oh, is a good I'm story. not going to wait. No, no, no. Take one no, second. I'm a, I'm a working mom. Hi, you're on, on the air. You're on the air. You're on. Nancy, you're on right now. Tell your story. Hello? Hello. Go ahead. Tell your story. All I want to say is I'm a relative of Sarah Hughes. Right. Oh, my son just told me you had me on before. Ah. You're kidding me. Your son ah. ruined it. Your son is a jerk. <laughs> no, my son is a great kid. Hey, hey can I tell you something? Uh, congratulate your, what is she, your niece? Yeah. And tell her that she should come on the show. Oh, okay. Does she listen to the show? I'll find out. I don't think she has time. She's well, skating at your time. Yeah, well, you know what? Tell her to have a life a little bit as a child. Well, do you know what those skaters do? They have to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to skate before school. Yeah, why did your sister-in-law push and push school? and push and drove this kid crazy? Why? No, she didn't do that. She's right. a little girl wanted Because they're she Jews. <laughs> they're pushy family. Jews. <laughs> oh, they they care about me and I don't like that. Is the family pushy Jews? Not, they're not. They're not. <laughs> That's a bunch of bull crap. Yeah. <laughs> they're pushing you. Yeah, do it. You're telling me at three months she begged to skate? Excuse me? At three months she was begging to skate or yeah. her mom put her on skates? No, she was skating because she comes from a really big family and all the kids were skaters. Yeah. Hans Christian Weinberg. <laughs> Don't make fun of her. Don't make fun of us. All right. I'm going to just make fun of you. I'll narrow it down to you. What do you want us to do? But anyway, I just want to tell you, you have a great show. We love you. By the way, you. thank you, and congratulations to your niece. And if she has any kind of decency, <laughs> she will come on this show. If Forget she has any decency, box. she'll testify for Al Goldstein. Still busy skating. <laughs> All right. Anyway. You, you sound like a sweetheart. Are you making fun of me? No, what? you're on the air. Yes. All right, now tell everyone what you said on the air. No, I'm not telling. Hold on. Dorothy Hamill's cousin's on line five. <laughs> <laughs> Thank making you. fun of me. Oh, Michelle Kwan's cousin is calling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you Did you have a nose job? <laughs> no. Did your niece have a nose job? No. All right, will you come on the air and say your niece did not have a nose job? Absolutely. All right, hold on one second. <laughs> Hi, you're on the air. This is the the aunt of the Sarah, girl. Who, yeah, yes, she says she's claiming now that there was no nose job. Go ahead, state your case. Hello, you're on the air. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hello, I'm done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. No, make so sure to wipe. That means there was a nose job. No, there was not. Let's not press the issue. <laughs> Are you denying Sarah By the, the way, ecstasy? Michelle Kwan has done this show. That's right. And she said, She did do it. <laughs> she did do it. No, but you don't know it, but she did the show. She's never won the gold medal, That's but right. she has done the show. Yeah, yeah that, that one. By the way, tripped. I'm learning a lot about you. So who's your favorite recording artist? <laughs> do you think O.J. Simpson? Oh, my that. favorite artist. Thank you. Okay. All right, baby cake. But anyway, it's been nice talking to you. My daughter's a big fan of yours. Tell your daughter Does I said... Does she skate? No. Too bad you didn't get her, that Jew, to skate. Yeah. No. <laughs> get that Jew to skate! That's not funny. Why did you not... Day. Why didn't you put your kids in skating, seeing that the other one was doing so well? Why don't you give your daughter that gift? Just too old. Really, that gift of love. Stay tuned for Jews on Ice. I wasn't part of that family then. Give your daughter the gift of no childhood. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but she's set for life. <laughs> yeah, she has a great life. How much? Hey, can you get any? Can you get in on any of that money? I'm not. I'm not interested. All right. No, no family members are interested. <laughs> I'm not interested. I don't need that. You mean a Jew not interested in money? <laughs> Come get you know, it, sweetie. I'm not that. I'm forget it. I'm not. Forget, don't laugh at me. Not uh -huh. funny. You're making it difficult, sweetie. <laughs> it's not funny. Yeah. I guess what 
what they say about the juice isn't true, Artie. Oh, yeah. Oh, come I mean, on. I don't think I'm on the air. All right, I'll put you on. You're on no, the air. Don't put okay. me on anymore. All right. No, uh, we'll put you on. You're on the air. Do me a favor. Deny or confirm that this young girl has had a nose job. It's really not a big deal. But the, the fact is, you should get one. Oh, now you, you know what? Now, you know, after I've been so nice. Don't make fun of us. You know, there's... Don't there's, make fun of me. That there are certain nice. things that we just go too far. Listen, my, my, niece, my niece did not have a nose job. Hear me, you? It's one thing for us to make anti-Semitic marks and Semitic marks about a 16-year-old. Exactly. But for you to make fun of a 46-year-old <laughs> radio personality. I'm that, it's, that's really... It's, hey, can I, 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 I only have me. Here. All right, let me I ask you. Let me, let me do it. I, I, I like kidding around as much as the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> that went too far. You should really apologize for that. I'm sorry, All right. And let me, so let me say something to you. Um, you are the aunt of this very famous girl now, and you are the closest we have to a spokesperson. And I'm curious how well you know her. I bet Shaq knows his dad better. <laughs> do you, do, do, are you really close to this girl? Have you ever met her? Or are you now becoming oh, close to her? Of course because... I've met her. Of course I've been to family functions. But let's not get into How it. How many this people is... are at those I functions? Just wanna... Has I just... she had sex yet? Excuse me, I have to go now. Has she had sex I... yet? I have to go Has now. She yeah, she yeah, Has she experienced Bukaki? Has she experienced Bukaki? How many people? Or Jukaki? <laughs> she got... Has she had Jukaki? <laughs> Jukaki, has she been hit in the face with nickels? Did you get license, the license plate number of the Yamaha to hit her in the face? <laughs> I guarantee you. People have to be invited to that party before she gets an invitation. I think Adam Carolla hit it right. That, as a matter of fact, yes. Probably Shaq knows his dad better than right. you know. I don't think. I have his close relationship exactly. with Sarah Hughes. Here's We've got to take a break. Gilbert Coffey's here. Adam Carolla's here. Hosts yeah. the Man Show Sunday nights at ten o'clock on Comedy and Central. You know I'm going to be sitting right next to her on a flight to L.A. in about two hours. <laughs> yeah. Gilbert Coffey at Caroline's on Broadway tomorrow night, eight o'clock for reservation. Call two one two seven five seven forty one hundred. Artie's back from Hollywood. That's right, baby. Gilbert will be at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick, New Jersey, on March seventh. We'll be back right after this. You are listening to. The Howard Stern Show. Hey now, what's this? Me? Oh, good. It's my favorite part of the show, me. Yeah. Gilbert Gottfried, Artie's back, Adam Carolla's here. What a what an all-star cast of hey. comedy's greatest dirty dozen. I tell you, they ought to make this a special. Right. <laughs> Sarah Hughes' aunt was on the phone. You know, this could be the wrong guys, too. Yeah. <laughs> the queens of comedy. <laughs> Here's a funny thing. I got a hold of uh, Jason Williams, who's now up on charges. You I got, got a hold of him? I, no, I didn't get a hold of him, but I got the next best thing. His book that he wrote a couple of years ago yeah. called Loose Balls. Oh, my God. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. Jeez. And uh, here's a sentence from his book. Now, if people want to get wild and throw a party, get crazy, they have to come do it at my house. I'm not always an angel, but if I'm a devil at home, no one gets hurt. Right. Oh, please. They might have to, Famous last word. They might have to change <laughs> that sentence. Yeah, no one gets hurt. <laughs> Unless you're a chauffeur. Well, wait a minute. Since when is being killed being hurt? <laughs> okay, you got me. Sort of technicality. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here that's kind of funny, too, but... I got I got a thirty one thousand square foot house now with a little golf course I built square feet. and horses and a skeet shooting range and I love it, but I also have to worry about some security. So he tells a story. He went and got a security dog. Uh huh. Right. And uh, it's one of these th places you call up and they give you a dog a that'll guard dog. You give it a word and it'll attack anyone. Right. And if you use another word, it'll stop attacking. Yeah, but he had to return it because it wouldn't. He couldn't fit it into the skeet shooter. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, never mind that. This guy, he goes, he, you know, there's a BS story anyway. He goes, so they got the dog, and of course he comes home, I guess, drunk one night or something, and uh, he can't remember the word to call off the dog. Oh, come on. So for two and a half hours he was trapped, and all, uh, he had to run out and go to a hotel. Why did you shoot the dog? 
<laughs> Wait a minute. What the hell? That's an easy solution. Hold on. This ain't a white guy you're talking about. This is a dog. I'm not shooting any dogs. Yeah, even when the dog attacks, he shoots the limo driver. Well, you said something funny the other day. You're like, I love how they hire a white limo driver. And he's got the Harlem Globetrotters and Jason Williams. They're like, damn, we got a white guy driving us around. Let's kill him. <laughs> hey, uh, I heard that you're upset, Gilbert, that Whoopi Goldberg got $8 million for a... Uh, for I don't what? know, for like a video game or something? They're, they're using her picture? Is that true? I wasn't upset. So you weren't? Is that true? Nah, She's really getting $8 million? No, she did get something. Well, what's this? It's Pac-Man. I uh, gave Gilbert this bad news at, I, at your New Year's party. I yeah. said that, you know, Whoopi got like $7 million on a uh, slot machine. Oh, you freaked? Oh, that's Gilbert's right. Like, oh, you don't even tell me that. <laughs> Yeah, like, but, like that somehow that'll affect Gilbert's yes. income. No no, 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 you don't say he's on it too, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's on the slot machine too. He got like oh. five grand. Bruce Wait Lane's got 20 million. Uh, bagel, bagel, bagel. Wait a second. <laughs> Gilbert got free. Gilbert got free. That's Stress Factory, March 7th. Gilbert. <laughs> Gilbert. Yes. When Whoopi gets $8 million, yeah. what is your age you get for you? <laughs> uh, let me look at my Bruce <laughs> Lane joke. <laughs> You're telling me that, uh, oh, you're on, it's a Hollywood Squares slot, slot machine, so they have to negotiate with everyone. Oh, yeah. And, and so she got $8 million. What did you get? I, I think I got lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Gilbert got a ride to where they had yes. to do the, pick the photo shoot. Are you able to negotiate a salary there? Or? I got a T-shirt from the recording place. You'll never get a serious yeah. Did you get over 20 grand, How Gilbert? How did this happen? Oh, yo, sh No, no, come on, honestly. Did you get over 20 grand? Be honest. <laughs> No, I got I got twelve million. <laughs> Robin, what's in the news? Yeah. I you really don't know what Gilbert got now. Well, how do you win it though? Does your head come up three times, Gilbert? Or I mean, You're like, do you, have you, you seen it? The, the, no. Oh, never saw it. That's good. Yeah. So, are they inside the slot machine? Is that what you get? Three Gilberts and you get a couple yeah. quarters? Or? Uh, so you don't get anything with yeah. three Gilberts. Ooh, Gilbert Gilberts. is like a lemon. Yeah, two Gilberts and a Caroline Ray, and you get like 50 cents. Yeah. I'm amazed That's that show's still on the air. Yeah. What about when the Son of the Beach slot machine comes out? He's going to oh, yeah. get screwed on that, too. <laughs> Gilbert in, in one slot machine is actually inside the machine. <laughs> they paid him like five grand for that. He's in there. Yeah. He runs on a hamster wheel to get the wheels turning. <laughs> What's up? Uh, you don't want to. I guess I, you don't want to. But I, I, I just found out how much Gilbert got for this. Oh, yeah. How do you find that out? I, I, you know, I have my ways. <laughs> this is Stuttering John or Alan Greenspan. Yeah, you, uh, what did he get? He got somewhere between 10 and 20 grand. Yeah, all right, that makes sense. Yeah. He grabbed it. Per machine? No. <laughs> Every time you hear my voice, you get that. She got seven million, you got ten grand. Yeah, yeah. And you even say you're much talent much more talented than that. <laughs> the sponsor gets seven million? <laughs> Are you gonna be on the Academy Awards this year? Oh, yes. I'm, after Son of the Beach comes out, I will. Somebody told me the Grammys are on tonight. They are on tonight. Boy, we haven't even paid attention to those. We talked about who was nominated, I guess, when the nominations first came out, but they're on tonight. They will be giving out the awards. I'm not all that excited about it. Look, I just got two Gilbert Gottfrieds. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play that Hollywood Squares machine. I must play the Gilbert Gottfried. Holly! I got one Gilbert Godfrey and two Bruce's. <laughs> Jim J. Bullock's on this one. It's an old one. Where can you find this machine? I got three of the Schwarzer girls. What's her name? <laughs> Whoopi. I got her. I win. That's I, Whoopi. I think Whoopi. I got a George <laughs> Goebel. <laughs> anyway. George Goebel. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in the news these days that you really don't understand, like this whole Enron case. And yeah, I don't even care about it. Company went out of business. Uh, I know, I know, I had some stock, but and whether it bothered me that it went out of business, does it hurt me? I don't know. If you had stock. If you had stock, I don't know. I don't know if it hurts all of us or just a few people. Enron Schmenron. But now there's a big, uh, you know, they're investigating this in Congress, and so... Don't I'm ask wrong. Gilbert to testify. <laughs> he won't show up. No character witness here. They got this Jeffrey Skilling, who was the former CEO in Congress yesterday, and the senators are quizzing him about his participation in this and whether he knew what was going on. So Barbara Boxer is talking to him, and she asks him, you know... Why didn't you understand that the uh, you know your you know your figures were all off because of the accounting? So uh, here's what he had to say. All right. I wouldn't say anything. Oh, I don't care. You can't even.
even understand it, but keep going. She sounds like Sarah Hughes Ann. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I called Enron the other day. Uh-huh. I got the strangest message. Where's my message? They have an answering machine on and Enron? Yeah. Where's my message from Enron? Quickly. Because I thought the company was out of business. Yeah. They still have a phone number. They have a phone number, but it's really bizarre. You got it? So I called Enron the other day, <laughs> and I got this really weird message. Thank you for calling Enron. Please listen closely to the following options as our menu has changed. If you wish to serve a subpoena on a current or former Enron executive, press 1. If you are an Enron shareholder and would like to learn how to turn your Enron stock certificates into decorative origami, press 2. If your Enron 401k plan is worthless and you'd like some tips on how to survive your retirement eating nothing but mac and cheese, press 3. If you are an Enron executive and would like to find out which prison inmate will be making you his bitch, press 4. If you would like to invoke your constitutional right against self-incrimination, press 5. If you are Dick Cheney, press 6. And thanks for nothing, Dick. If your company is looking to hire someone to record your voicemail menu options, please press 7. Or stay on the line and an operator will assist you. Thank you for calling Enron, the world's greatest company. Yeah. It's too confusing. Yeah. To generate a gain or avoid a loss on its income statement. Did you? Is that true? Um, Were you aware of that? I, I am not an accountant. I didn't ask you that. Dennis is your statement true? <laughs> uh, I think I'd have to be an accountant to know if it's true. I, I don't. Wait a minute. You have to be an accountant to know. So since he doesn't understand accounting, you know, the the senator then asked him where he went to school. Uh oh, Daddy should know. Look out! <laughs> Let's see if he can answer this. Here comes the tough ones. In my case, I've blocked it out. <laughs> what was your education, Mr. Chilling? I know I read it was right. pretty good. What? I have a master's in business administration. A master's in business administration, and yet you didn't know this simple fact. Is that correct? You're saying you were ignorant of that fact that Ms. Watkins has told us. Well, I'm, it's I'm, not complicated. I'll give you two. Even, I'll give you even two. those of us up here understand this very clearly. Okay, well, well just Company a second, Senator. Company can never use its you... own stock to generate a gain or avoid a loss. And you're saying, in getting your master's, and where did you go to school? Harvard Business School. Okay. In Harvard <laughs> Business School, you did not know this. Man. Hey, I guess Harvard's not so good. It would be fun mar being married to that broad, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Argument. Well, when she goes home, she leaves that all at the office. She becomes a real lady. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. You know, but She's not going to bust your balls. Yeah. So true. you mean to tell me you say you're at work all the time, but you don't have time to go to dinner with me. Is that right? Uh -huh. Where'd you go to school? <laughs> at a certain point, shouldn't you just cut your losses, salvage your little dignity, and go, listen, I was too busy effing your elderly mom. <laughs> <laughs> About, like, just go out swinging. Mm -hmm. oh. you went, so you went to scores and you're a married man? Mm. Mm. Where's the logic there? <laughs> Instead of being with your children, you were with strippers? Right. And you couldn't leave there? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you don't have money to put a deck on the house, but you can drop $3,200 at a strip. Well, ma'am, in all fairness, I don't know exactly what I spent. Where did you go to college at Boston University? Did you spend all four years there? Yes, I did. You don't know how much you spent at scores? <laughs> No, I don't. Was it 30? Was it 100? <laughs> Tell me. Hypothetically, if you went to scores, how long would you stay there? And what's so funny about the money? <laughs> Was it five minutes? Was it a week? <laughs> so anyway, Howard, Gary Condit is uh, running for Congress. I mean, again, even after the uh, Chandra Levy uh, scandal. Why is he running again? He I mean, has decided that he has no reason not running? to run. Is he running? Is he walking? Can he win? Seriously. Uh, I think he can. You do? Yeah, I say no I, way. I bet I bet he can. It depends on just what the, the issues are. Those people don't care about if he What if more of his interns uh, show up dead before the election? <laughs> will How that many dead him? interns well, will it take? Well, that could hurt him. That could hurt you. But, All right, you know, so can't... here he is on Larry King last night. He says he's running for re-election, and there's no reason why he shouldn't. Yeah, marry and Barry one. <laughs> uh, pleasure having you. Why are you running again? I mean, you you had a chance to just... Go quietly into the night. Well, there was no reason for me not to run. 
I mean, I, I, I have a good uh, 30 years of public service. I've, uh, Except for the missing girl that I didn't testify about. <laughs> I've been a, a strong advocate for my district in the Congress for the last 11 years, so there's just really no reason for me not to run. Yeah, <laughs> except for killing that chick. <laughs> well, they don't yeah. say he killed it. Oh, we don't know that he killed it, but he certainly can't answer any questions like, about it. Like one broad ends up in a dumpster. I can't run for Senate anymore. <laughs> Maybe he hasn't killed anybody, but he says the media has killed a lot of his support. The, the media had created a tremendous amount of negative for me. I mean, I usually win by like... Maybe because you didn't cooperate all that much? Well, well I have to run. The police are chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to run, but I'm running from another country. I off a lot of support just, you know, uh, on hearsay, rumors, in your windows, and so on and so forth. I mean, it was like every day, uh, you know, there was something on the air about me that was negative. So, oh. thank God for that 9-11 thing. You got me in the clear. Yeah. That's for the downside. But no, hey, no kidding. But he's guy. running in California, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just Mexicans, gays, and stone liberals. Oh my God. He can get right. He can go. Unless I come from California, I know. So you can say no that. one cares. <laughs> right. So he says his only mistake was uh, not uh, realizing the power of of the media. You yourself, as you look at yourself, what did you? It's very difficult for me to do that, Larry. <laughs> It's hard to look in the mirror after this. How about Maybe looking well. at Larry? Uh, now, how does Larry look in the mirror? Really, <laughs> Jesus. That's be uh, what's that? Probably didn't anticipate. <laughs> <laughs> like a toupee. Penis. <laughs> Uh, the gravity of, of, of what the media was going to do, how they were going to respond to this. I actually thought I had done what I was supposed to do. And that is, you know, report and tell everything that I knew to the law uh, enforcement people. Listen, you crazy bastard. I was, I'm as crazy as they come. Bad checks, eight marriages. But I got to tell you, you're as nutty as a fruitcake. My, my best friend, Sandy Koufax, once told me, if you're going to kill an intern... I want you to demonstrate on me how you tongue kissed that guy. <laughs> One time I was palling around with Gleason. He didn't like interns either. <laughs> but I never imagined in my wildest dreams that the media would take off on this like they did. You're a superstar. I actually, Larry, I thought I knew about injustice. Yeah, he sure Oh, yeah, 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 right. Injustice. He, everybody's to at fault but him. If you want my advice, wear suspenders. <laughs> a very close friend of mine named Napoleon once told me... <laughs> Carry on, my wayward son. He should just become dice. So my yeah. intern was this chick. <laughs> oh. Uh, Jason Williams. I don't know where that intern is. Oh. <laughs> hey, Larry, what are you, a homo? Oh. Hickory dickory dock and that's it. <laughs> like Larry has an almost right. been in jail a few times. Yeah, no kidding. He's talking to a kindred spirit. Yeah. Um, what did I miss cancel that night? So we got Gary Condra. <laughs> you know what? I would have done the interview being being somewhat of the theatrical. I would have like taken a Chandra Levy head and stuck it on my shoulder <laughs> for the whole interview. <laughs> I thought I hid that. <laughs> Jason Williams, we were talking about his contract earlier and what's going on. He gets about $15 million a year. He had a seven-year contract. And he played for two weeks. With the Nets, yep. yeah. And hurt himself very early into yeah. the contract. So they've been paying him off because it was insured. And uh, it's about $15 million a year he gets. But the contracts with the insurance company they're saying usually mirror the contract you have with the team, and they often involve morals or include morals clauses. In other words, he's owed $34 million and is probably going to lose it all yeah. because if convicted. If, if convicted. Hey, look. Dope. <laughs> Hey, yeah. this is what happens. And they also take away the money when he recorded the Hollywood Squares game. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst part about it. Well, the thing is, I was wondering, you know, because NBC announced yesterday that uh, he has some personal problems that he really needs to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> and so he will not be on this week's telecast. I guess so. <laughs> what else is in the news? And that um, I'm just wondering if he worked out a deal with them where he still gets the money while he doesn't work because he seems to have that kind of luck in his life. Mm -hmm. Uh, team drinking is at an all-time high, according to a new survey. <laughs> How do I get on a team? Yeah. <laughs> Not team, teen. Oh, team. Yes. Teenagers are doing a lot of binge drinking. The legal drinking age in the United States is 21. Hey, kids, when you drink, don't shoot your white chauffeur. <laughs> exactly. Don't play with guns.
sudden. You know, they, they always talk about that binge drinking with the teens. But yes. what, what's a teen supposed to do other than binge drink? Have a martini at lunch? Yeah, just a little social Crack drinking. a cold one after a tough day at work? Hey, is anybody... I mean, that's all you can do as a teen is binge drink. Anybody ever try to understand calculus? You'd be drinking, too. Yeah. <laughs> Since when is a beer bong binge drinking? What other kind of drinking is there than binge yeah, drinking? You wouldn't know, Artie. Yeah, that's really. For sure. And remember, guns don't kill white chauffeurs. Black athletes kill white chauffeurs. <laughs> Uh, what they find is that under the age of 15, drinking is continuing to rise. And unfortunately, it seems that parents don't think that's such a bad deal. They, a lot of them say they'd rather their kids be drinking than out doing other things. Like what? Most of the yeah. drinking goes on at home. It's better than shooting heroin, I guess. Yeah. Not really. I tried both. Oh, really? You think that drinking is worse? Heroin's, no, heroin's clearly better. Oh. <laughs> They should be. Last longer, you feel great. Uh, the Secret Service made a boo-boo out in Salt Lake City. I guess the vice president uh, was there at the closing of the games. And uh, a bunch of the Secret Service guys went into this, I guess, a fast food restaurant. And they left a lot of the plans lying around about where the vice president was supposed to be sitting and how his movements were supposed to be handled around Salt Lake City. And when this guy called up and said, look, you know, you left some things here that are probably you don't want other people to see mm -hmm. they did come over to get them and he said you know in return could you just get me the uh, vice president's autograph they said no so this guy called the media and now everybody knows <laughs> oh that these God. secret service guys <laughs> left the plans in a restaurant great so uh, maybe they should have gotten that little autograph for the guy mm -hmm. Uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, she uh, had her <laughs> show premiere yesterday watching Ellie on NBC TV. And here she talks about the concept of the show in case you didn't get it. Number uh, No, I read one. the book. <laughs> so so I, I know it. <laughs> it's 22 minutes of, of real time wow. in this character's life. So it starts with her, you know, getting dressed. Wow. And How long are well, you get to see her get dressed? Oh, yes. wow. wow. That's funny. Ooh. 22 wow. minutes later in the club. Wow. 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 Hey, if Al Goldstein's the thing, you should give out her address and phone number. <laughs> And uh, at the end of the show, I told you how she sings. So here's uh, her little comment on how she enjoys singing, what she enjoys about it. Here's what I like about singing. It's just pure joy. There's Didn't she say she's awful she's as a terrible. singer? And they she's terrible. She's the only one having this pure the joy. Bacon, you know, the Bacon Brothers are better. <laughs> you know how Seinfeld did his little comedy at the end? Oh, but he's yeah. like a funny guy. Yeah. The, she sings at the end. He's, he's trying to be like Seinfeld, but the problem is she can't sing. Yeah. She's a terrible singer. But no, music is her first love. Right. It's complicated in a way, in an emotional way, because you can just think, ba, 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 and ba, ba, it ba. makes you happy. Ba, 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 it makes me happy to sing. Because yeah. right. the fact that my parents were the Dreyfus Fund, ba, 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 ba. I can sing as badly as I want. It, it would be like Raymond Bird tap dancing at the end of Iron Chef. <laughs> Isn't it great? It that makes her happy. Tap dancing Isn't it great? is my first love. <laughs> Julia Louis-Dreyfus whose father is the Dreyfus Fund. Yeah. Isn't it great that she has failure now? Honestly. Yeah, let's finally. See yeah. I mean, I'm happy about it. Oh, I could, I'm ecstatic. It's I'm just glad. Well, I need therapy for this. <laughs> I hate rich. Oh, forget it. I hate when rich people get richer from. Why do they work? They take the jobs from us poor people. Exactly. <laughs> Man, Gilbert would have been much better in that role. Watching Gilbert. Well, he sings at the end. All right, so that's her. And, that's and her and her, her wonderful life. Uh, Jennifer Connolly is in the news. Of course, she co-stars with uh, She's hot. Russell she Crowe and A Beautiful Mind. Oh, Russell Crowe's hot. Oh, Gilbert, we're on <laughs> yes, the air. I don't know if you know that. Oh, damn. And, of course, we're interested in her every thought. And here she shares her thoughts on her Best Actress nomination. I don't deserve it. Yeah, let's hear how she shares her thoughts. <laughs> I was a geek you know, I, in high I was, school. Yeah, no. <laughs> really um, blessed before in my life, and then everything that's come to me, and, and I was, and I am. And Personally, I liked her in Rocketeer. <laughs> uh, um, I'm even more so with this. I'm really honored and grateful. An honor, just to be considered. Yeah, honor, honor, honor. And, and a beautiful mind is all being really done in real time. I was, I was There's a clock in the corner. Neutral in the time coming out to it. I was working really hard. Um, but I can say now that um, I'm very happy and grateful. Yeah. She was working very hard. Personally, I liked her on her knees. Oh. 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 Here's a rocket, dear. Oh. Nicole Kidman.
Newman has been... Uh... Blessed! Oh! It's been talked about a lot uh, this year because of her role in uh, Moulin Rouge, yes. a film that was Hey, let me by... give you what Tom wasn't giving you. Oh! <laughs> by Baz Luhrmann. Here is the Baz man. Moulin Rouge. Uh, <laughs> on his thoughts on her nomination and what she went to to make this movie. Adrian is so proud of her. So proud. I mean, it... oh, hey, it be know. proud of this. Oh! She had to face and the personal experience that she was going through from where she had to face that fear. Hey, face this! Oh, yeah. Don't get carried away. Oh, I'm, I'm still on the Xanax. The and plane. of course, Marissa Tomei is uh, one of the nominees, is uh, Best Supporting yes. Actress. And what's the best part, Marissa, about being I'll nominated? I'll show you the best part. Oh. Be one. The best part is the best part is speaking to Sissy and Tom and Todd on the phone and all getting to go together as a gang. I hate to hear the worst part. Enjoying it and and sharing it with friends. Hey, share this with your friends. Okay, folks, that's what's happening. Well, sometimes you feel like you're in insane asylum. Moulinian Rouge! Oh. First of all, Adam Carolla, who has, I think he's asleep because yeah. he hasn't said anything. He's been he's been uh, up since what time? Uh, I did a radio show from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. last night, so. But it was just love lines, so no one yeah. cared. Yeah. Oh my he's done well. He's done well. I'm surprised. He stayed away for He did, Adam. Yeah. And Adam, thank you for spending the last three days here. I love oh, it when you're here. And I hope you come back and see us again soon, anytime. Anytime you like. Uh, Adam, uh, by the way, is not going to sleep now. He's going to NPR to do a five hour radio show. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, doing one of those marathons. Yeah. He has five shows. <laughs> he's trying to get into that record book. <laughs> then he's going to go do the man show. It's, a, it's sh endless shows. How long can he go? You know, he's so delightful. Every show has to have him. <laughs> uh, Adam Carolla hosts the man show Sunday nights at 10 o'clock on Comedy Central. Check it out and hear Adam on Loveline from 10 p.m. to midnight in most radio markets. Now, let's get to Gilbert Gottfried's scary career. Most <laughs> Even with Hollywood Squares, yeah. he's still doing the same gigs. <laughs> See Gilbert Gottfried perform at Caroline's on Broadway tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. For reservations, call 212-757-4100. Congratulations on that gig, oh, yes. Gilbert. <laughs> and also, if that's not enough Gilbert for you, yeah. and there never is enough Gilbert. You can never get enough. Gilbert will be at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick, New Jersey on March 7th. Everyone looking forward to that date. Yeah, yeah. And then you got to search for the lost episode of Southern <laughs> Beach. Right. Yeah. Before you know it, Gilbert will be part of Stuttering John and Friends. Oh. The tour. He's also going to be the voice of a waffle iron. <laughs> Hanna Barbera going to be the voice stuff. of a spatula. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's welcome Artie back, who's fresh off a big Hollywood movie set. Yes, I just got well. back from uh, rehab. I mean, a movie. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to find out all about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, see us all in about three seconds during the break trying to have a conversation with Gilbert. <laughs>